Aha, we have night vision. Nice. And if I fly up into the wall, it's like, oh, yes, I remember this place. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's see. What are the things I want to talk about? First off, just like in terms of three-dimensional structure, when I started going through this, it kind of felt a little bit maze-like. And I remember really enjoying the pyramid maze from the original Final Fantasy mm -hmm. map. And... um. Yeah, when you're building something like this and like building all the different rooms, do you think about the 3D structure at all? Or do you just like, I want to build a room like this and build it and then build the next part and hope it comes together? Or... Um, for this particular dungeon, uh, I centralized around, well, I mean, obviously this is the central structure, this uh, the kind of helix staircase mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. um, so I had that in mind, and then I basically just had to build rooms until I got closer to the center where i wanted to to place this um but yeah i mean for the most part when i'm, I'm creating i'm in mc edit so i'm you know when i'm inside the sphere even if there's no rooms in it i'm still seeing basically what we're seeing now mm -hmm. and uh interesting so you so made yeah, the spheres I, I first just, i just kind of imagined you built the dungeon and then like made a sphere the right size to like fit around it or something kind of thing yeah, yeah, no, I, I made the spheres first, and they were filled with a like a solid block of. Mm. Uh, with this one, it was double smooth sandstone. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, which has your joke on the sign that I'm going to add <laughs> right. a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, then I just I carve everything out. I, I, it's it's a lot easier, and uh, it, yeah, especially for a jam map um, when you have limited build time, uh, doing inner and outer architectural detail. That'll just, that'll bother oh, you. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Right. Um, so, you know, even though it did take some time to generate, uh, you the know, sphere, the spheres, it's kind of like a programmatic kind of thing. Stuff. Rather than something yeah. That you know, you to it with. took some time, but mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, individually detailing a bunch of, you know, like a giant fortress like this. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. The time is, it's incomparable really. Yeah. Um, yeah. The spheres do look really cool on the outside, but yeah, I hadn't even thought about that aspect of kind of like map making kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I remember like Vex talking about kind of like negative space in terms of like starting with something that's solid and then kind of hollowing out bits was kind of the easiest way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's I find that to be pretty much true, uh, especially. I don't know, it, it's very strange for me to admit that because I used to make, you know, all my maps were built in positive right. space uh, previously. Mm -hmm. um, but Vinyl Fantasy three is mostly a cave based map uh, for the most part. I see. That's Spoiler something that alert. we'll come back to. So, yeah, talking about right. later, I'm sure. But yeah, so I've gotten used to working. In, right, and in I hadn't really space. thought about and it. Like, and, you're it just... and it really is more efficient. Like, there, Vex is definitely not wrong about that. Right, and I hadn't really thought about it until just now when we're talking about MC Edit. But like, uh, the I don't know if you call them, you know, brushes or whatever. So like, I see all the spheres and rectangles and cylinders and mm -hmm. uh, pyramids, and I hadn't really noticed it or thought about it before. Now. Yeah, I mean, this is all pretty basic MC edit structures, and then mm -hmm. I just kind of come through with a uh, like another single block brush and MC edit, and brush in all the details like the arc arc ceilings and you know stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. So let's see. Uh, and I like the fast travel to and from the beginning of the trance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fast travel. Sorry, the general, second just... one didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked after I'd completed the first yeah. trance, and so yeah. I, I think what they were is they uh, the first trance and the second trance were uh, accidentally running on the same scoreboard value. So I once see. you actually visited the first trance, gotcha. the then it lit up the second worked. one. Yeah. yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. That was just I had to yeah, get version one point oh, and I think everybody else probably has one point oh one. Yeah um where that got fixed so yeah there's the sign i feel like in general with a lot of the signs it's almost like you're telling inside jokes to yourself or something yeah or just kind of inside community uh ctm community jokes uh which there's a you know when i say didn't you learn anything from i am i'm referring to inferno mines mm -hmm. which was uh kind of a point of uh conflict for the community because uh there's there's a lot of people that really like that map and a lot of people that really didn't like that map. Um, 
But I boiled that whole argument down into the fact that no <laughs> no one liked the uh, sandstone slabs, the uh, double smooth ones. So just kind of boiled that down into like a small little inside joke. And yeah, I don't know. I Like I said, the whole lore thing, like I'm just done with lore. Like I would rather just have like snarky map maker commentary mm-hmm. than, you know, anything too in-depth. I went back into uh, game mode one so I could see the bouncy creepers. And so basically, yeah, you just gave them tons of jump boost. And then the way that the floor is set up encourages them to jump. And so you see them jumping up here. Mm -hmm. And then the short timer to make sure if they do jump up here, they explode right in your face. Um, In general, I hadn't really thought about it, uh, this particular question, but like in general, like how many of the mob spawners have at least like one custom aspect on the mob and it's probably like all of them every single one yeah okay yeah that's why i kind of when i when i say i'd like the map to be harder a lot of that is involved with re uh you know tuning the mobs retuning yeah all the the mbt data on every single mob spawner so there's there's some filters that'll let you do that you know, in bulk, but oh, right, right, right. when each spawner has a different mob and different everything, like, you know, that bulk filter won't really help you. You got to go do every spawner individually. I see. So, yeah, that's why I'm kind of like, yeah, it's kind of easy, but oh, well, <laughs> I don't want to edit 100,000 mob spawners today. So I love the trap in this room. For those who need a refresher, basically the back tr- chest is trapped and it sets off some TNT that not only goes off right here, but also causes a big explosion in the back corner of the hallway right here, which is where the player would run uh, if they were to set off the trap. Mm-hmm. And it was also kind of like the first trap I encountered in a trance dungeon. And so I got really lucky. Oh yeah, you're exposing all the redstone. That's going over to the other bit of TNT. And so, yeah, I got really lucky that I didn't kind of like fall in the hole and kind of get exploded by the TNT and so I just took some damage. Um, And I did see that it was a trap beforehand. Something that I only realized after watching other people play the map is uh, on F3, um, if you look at the block underneath the chest on the the top right, it actually, it shows you, yeah, on the debug screen what block you're looking at. That's cool, though. I'm going to have to remember that. I'll have to uh, disable the, uh, the debug on my next map. Can you do that? Is there like a yeah? There's a game disabled? game rule for that. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, for I think it's called simple debug or something like that. I oh. see. Awesome. I'll have to fiddle with that yeah. myself just to know it. But yeah, I saw someone using that, and I was like, I didn't realize that was a thing, but I was still proud of myself that I visually just saw the difference. And yeah. Yeah. And stone and stand. It's it's a good thing for just if you're running through and not paying a lot of attention. It works pretty good. And so I yeah, think the there's... thing is now is like uh, people are just so aware of drop traps like that or block update traps that. Right. You know, that's and, why kind of why I did this redstone thing with the uh, TNT cuz yeah, like you said, you're going to hit the trap and and then here it is and then run for your, yeah, exactly. And so you, and just about everybody I saw did that. So that must be fun for you to watch uh, oh, yeah. people's playthroughs. Um uh there was something else I was going to say. Oh yeah, you don't use any trap chests. Um I don't. And yeah, is is there any particular aspect you don't like about it or well, the fact that you can look at a trap t- chest and tell that it's trapped, right? I mean, it's just too easy. I, I don't see. know. All right. I, I thought the way that they, they implemented those, uh, they being Mojang, was mm-hmm. like a little a little weak or so. I don't know. I, I, I think it's great when people can debug a trap and, you know, pull it apart. Uh-huh. But, like, the fact that, like, the trap chest is just a, it's got a dead tell on it, you know? Like, I, I don't know. Like, okay. Why would you do that? <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my philosophy behind that. Trap chests are too easy. Um, I guess we can fly through this way, and so as you go up the helix, the mobs just kind of get harder and harder caliber uh, of kind of zombie bad guys, and then I don't remember mm-hmm. if there were. I guess the cave spiders are like when you finally get up to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Over here. Yeah, this is kind of like the first little. This is like the first room in here that should kind of push you back a little bit there's enough mobs and chaos going on um that you might have to run back down the stairs a couple times Mm. i know i did when i would play it (laughs) i know i did it more than a couple of times yeah um such as my play style we will say and then i can't remember which direction i guess it's over here yeah oh yeah and then i remember coming up the stairs into this room 
<laughs> and this room was also a tough room to first enter, this, but I really enjoyed this room. I, I like this too. This was actually something I added after uh, after the original release or the jam version. Uh, the jam version, you essentially just worked your way up that that cylinder, the helix staircase, I guess. I see. And there were no side rooms or anything like that, uh, aside from like the little cave spider rooms. Um, and so I wanted to kind of make it a little less linear, you know, like going up steps just around in circles isn't mm. really that interesting. So I kind of branched off out here and mm. came yeah. up with this. And then I really like putting creepers on places that are above your head. Yep. Um, because I, re I really like that jump down and instant explode mechanic. Uh, especially when you're going to have armor that's not going to be instant death for you. Right. Every time. Yes. So it's not when you can survive a creeper blow <laughs> and so it's threatening but not not uh, going to just like insta kill you. Like, yeah, creepers can then mess with the train and they change your light levels by mm -hmm. blowing up your torches and all kinds of things. And there's a lot of potential for chaos. And there were a lot of different mob types in this room. And so, yeah, I just remember this one being a fun one. Uh, and then I felt, I felt good about myself when I got it all lit up and conquered. There, there's also another really weird thing. I'm not sure. I can't remember if it happened to you. Um, but when you finally make your way up these stairs, it seems like a lot of the mob AI isn't tracking you until you hit this top platform, and then all these mobs will lock onto you. I see. Uh, and then you'll, you know, almost certainly get back down these stairs, and you can just watch this, you know, train of gotcha. mobs like flooding down the stairs. <laughs> It's happened to me several times. I, I found it pretty entertaining. Uh, speaking of the mob, like follow AI, like there's a follow distance. There's like something in attributes or NDT that you can fool with. Did you do mm -hmm. that actually in this uh, next room? I or did anywhere? that in almost all the spawners cases. All mobs have the zombies follow range as opposed oh, to. Oh, wow. That's like way uh, bigger than normal mobs. Yeah. Right. I believe it's 32 or 40 blocks. I think it's 40 blocks. Yeah, that sounds plausible. Um, Whereas my and default is usually like 16 Default is 16. Right. right. Yeah, so almost all the mobs, if, if I did everything correctly on my right. end, will track you for Gotcha. Further. I noticed it especially in a room that we're coming up over here. Um, so there was the obvious, obvious trap chest, but you had to walk in just to see what happens mm -hmm. and all the super ender mites. Did, did you ever realize it was a tripwire? Um, I think I did when I was watching someone else play through, but I didn't realize it when I did it. And yeah. So it was a good, a well-hidden tripwire in terms of against the end stone. You don't notice it all that well. Um, let's see. So yeah, that room, yeah, it was obviously a trap. Uh, this is the area where the follow distance, I thought, made this area a whole lot of fun because watching these creepers and they were speedy creepers. Mm -hmm. And so watching them come running up the stairs at you and like falling all around and like you'd blow up part of the stairs and then like they'd find a different way to get to you. And so they'd be, you know, like running and making five left turns and all of a sudden they're back on top of you. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I, I, I thought this turned out pretty good, too, for, you know, kind of taking a a very large concept and, and making it really small into just one room. I thought it turned out pretty good. I guess it's not really a large concept. It's yeah, just so like it's something just... that would apply better in like a larger area or something. I see. Compacting yeah. it down to just this little pyramid area. Yeah. But I, I ran into the same thing where I, you know, I'd, I'd think I'd cut them off at all their, their passes and then I'd see him kind of get up above me and then start jumping down. Like, no, yeah. No. I don't know if that was anything that was kind of planned or if it was just like cool geometry, of the staircase and it just kind of happened to work out that way. But either way, yeah, it just worked out that way. I think I just, you know, I've kind of got this like tendency to start symmetrical with stuff as you can see at the bottom. And then I got like a little looser as I went up and just now it goes here. Now it goes there. I don't know if I had any kind of weird algorithm in my head that I was following. And then I think over here, was this the room that there was like another trap that like blew something up straight down or something? I think maybe yeah. it didn't like blow up in mine, but like blew up in someone else's that I watched or something. I'm not sure if this has TNT. It, it's a it's a block up. Oh, trap that's right. I remember now. Spawner. Yes. From when you break the um, spawner. Because I never broke the spawner. I ended up not breaking a lot of the spawners and I just like to light things up. Uh, it's just kind of like my MO. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's TNT. I think uh, what it does is it uh, underneath all these, oops, stuck in a web. Underneath these sides over here, there's a bunch of dispensers. Right. Uh, and so right. it triggers a like a burnout torch. I like to use burnout burnout torches a lot. Those are sixteen times or whatever. Yeah, and so these are full of cave spiders. 
Right. I guess we can set that off. We won't die. <laughs> and so it just spawns a ton of them, but they all take, uh, you know, they're just spawn egg spiders, so they take a couple ticks of damage from suffocating, and then they're just one shot after that. Hmm. Neat. I think I was really obsessed with, um, there's actually an area in uh, Final Fantasy 3 that I was working on at the time that's kind of bug-based. And so I was really obsessed with the idea of a trap just letting loose like a swarm of bugs. I see. And so <laughs> seems like I you had one over here as well. Yeah, I tried to do that a lot. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And, yeah, this was another one that, yeah, most of the traps, it's like I would see them and I wouldn't think too hard about how to disarm them. And I would just think, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I know it's a trap. I'm just going to open it and run. <laughs> and then each time I'd get hit by like a splash potion of poison or something. I'd be like, darn it. Next time I'm not going to do that. And then I would do the same thing again. This one's actually, I think it's pretty much set up so that like no matter what you do, it goes off. I mean, you can dig around it and. Right. If you put enough block something. updates, yeah, like around where you try to dig around it, like it's probably yeah. quite possible to make it impossible to debug and obviously you could do crazy things with command blocks too yeah i I've, i'm still not sure about like using too many command blocks yeah it definitely i, I always want the trap to be feel honest or something some yeah way. like you can do so much amazing stuff with the command block trap but there's got to be some way that the player can right that's one of the challenges in general like i feel like with map makers is the map making gives you a lot of creative freedom to do all kinds of crazy stuff and so the question is how much can you expect the player to understand what's going on or how much do you have to explain to them or different mm -hmm. things like that and that actually comes into play here because i made the completely incorrect assumption about what the summoner was doing because the first time i came in here right. there happened to be a bunch of endermen in the room and i was like oh he's holding an ender pearl he must be like causing like endermen to be summoned in the room yeah. um but he just has a higher recruitment level for like the zombies calling recruits. Yeah. See, he called this guy right here. He yep. wants me. Um, yeah, that wasn't very clear, I guess. It was one of those things that. It was okay, because I know yeah. that zombies can, you know, like summon to recruit other zombies. But, mm -hmm. yeah. They're, you know, when you crank up, they're, I think their default calling percentage is. I don't know. I think it's like 15% or 10%. It, it might be dependent on regional difficulty. Uh, but, you know, I crank these guys up to 70 or 80% and they they don't really call a lot of zombies. It yeah, I didn't see anybody uh, get swarmed over with them. And so, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how the Minecraft algorithms work with that. But yeah. it it's kind of one of those things that... where I realized it wasn't kind of working as intended. And then I just was like, just left you know, it. yeah, yeah, it's like I, I could probably add like 30, 40 command blocks and make them do something. Cool. Right. I don't want to do that. Yeah. As a map maker, I know exactly what you mean. It's like, hmm, I had this idea and it didn't quite work out. And it's like I could spend another 20 hours on it and make it do what I wanted it to do. Or yeah. I could do something else with 20 hours of my life. Yep. Yep. And then, let's see. Right. This room with the first gas spawner. This is a tough room. It was, yeah, it was surprisingly tough. It was mostly tough because I had a hard time getting the gas spawner taken out. And with the gas, so you have the fireballs, like, doing more damage on the gas? The fireballs do double uh, the default. Okay, uh, so that explains it. So they'll break, like, you can actually They'll break blocks use, that they don't normally Yeah, you break. can actually use them to destroy the spawner. Yes. Uh, returning their fireballs. That actually happens to me in Trance Dungeon number two, and so that was one of the things that I didn't realize it had happened until afterwards, uh, and I wasn't sure exactly what was happening. I suspected, just based on how much fire was being caused by the ghasts, um, that it was extra explosive power in the fireballs, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't kind of really think through that concretely while I was playing the map to realize that it would break more blocks and I could take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, I actually went and looked up, yeah, like all the details of like gas, explosive, and what blocks I could break and different kind of things after I played the map because I was curious about it. And so yeah, that plus, yeah, like any skeletons or spiders that would jump at you in here made it hard to get over to the gas spawner to actually take it out. But then once the gas spawner was taken out, the room got a whole lot easier to deal with. Mm hmm. I actually, um, in one of my playthroughs, after, you know, testing the map over and over again, you start to get a little bored. So 
in one of my playthroughs when I got to this room, I just opened up a, uh, a window, uh, something like that in the, in the iron bars. Uh-huh. And I, I used the gas fireballs to take out all the spawners in the room. Neat. That <laughs> yeah. was pretty fun. The yeah. Only one gas pong. Get. Yeah. If I realized it was a mechanic that I could use like that, I it would have been fun to use, but unfortunately, like I said, it was like, it didn't occur to me. And so that's another thing that like, yeah, I don't know how to deal with it. Like, you don't want to give everything away up front, but at the same time, like, yeah. the players aren't even aware of the fact that gas fireballs can have more explosive power than the default, and that means they can blow up more things. Yeah, yeah. it's. I, I kind of go by, like, the general rule of thumb that Minecraft doesn't explain anything to you on <laughs> So, you know, like, whatever you're trying to tell your players in that may occur, it's, it's bonus material, basically. Like... They should be they happy happy that they know. Hmm. But yeah, and then they're yeah, like you said, you know, telling telling them right away, like, hey, guess what? You can return these gas fireballs and destroy almost anything. Like that's I don't know that that would be that fun. Um, I'm trying to go in game mode three and F3N. I guess like I don't know if it doesn't work in multiplayer or what, but uh, or maybe oh, it's a 1.9 thing, isn't it? And we're 1.8. Ha! Huh? I, th- I think so. Yeah. yeah. And then I finally got to the wool in this dungeon, and one of many things I did not notice... Or the wool. I just called it the wool. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I finally got inside the birdcage and did not notice the secret key at all. Oh, I, that's right. That's right. I, I don't know that. if it's by design that there's one level here and levers just happen to be something that kind of fades into the gray background of the whatever. And yeah. the fact that the player has been so focused for the past hour trying to beat this room and I finally get in here, it's just like, grab a record disc and run. But, you know, I think a better place for that lever would have been in between the two records. I don't know if you're looking in that chest. Oh, yeah, I see. Like it is now. Right. But then I would have had to put another one, and there right. comes like that symmetrical then, creative yeah. OCD again. And you're just like, oh, I don't know, yeah. maybe like this or something? Yeah. I don't know. But in you any case, like a thing going on. I did not notice the secret key, but apparently if you use the secret key, I guess I went back yeah, after good. I saw somebody else do it. And if you use it over here, then it just, like, opens up a secret shortcut passage to get back out of the dungeon. Although you have to take fall damage unless you had already gone to Trance 3 and gotten a water bucket, or had gotten some slime blocks, or... Yeah. I guess maybe make a boat. build yourself a stair play. Stair yeah, I guess down. you can kind of build your way down. Yeah. Uh, but then you get down to here, and then you still have, like, a six-block fall or something. I didn't yeah. know if there was, yeah, any... Any thought that went into that but it doesn't really matter. Um, basically, the only thought was like I, I really one of the things that I'm really critical of like my early maps was that every single area was like you get the wool and then you have to turn around and walk all, all right. the way back out. Yep. And I really think that's like poor level design. So yeah, basically I just right. wanted to get you and out of that wool room in a different direction. Right. I really care where it dropped you. Right. So and this also, isn't too bad though. Yeah, yeah. and also for speedrunners, like it's uh, I'm sure um, makes them happy. And yeah. I've, I've talked to you, like I've at least thought about trying to speedrun this map. Um, and yeah, stuff like that definitely helps. Yeah, there should be like I don't really design too much with speedrunning in mind. Um, so if you picked apart these dungeons, you'd see I didn't like use a lot of bedrock or barrier right, blocks right. to block off sections. So you could dig around quite a bit and get some good shortcuts. Indeed, uh, and yeah, I actually yeah in my playthrough, I like once I had a sense of the 3D space, like cut a couple of shortcuts just to make it easier because I was going back and forth a lot. Um. I think that's everything from trance one that I want to talk about. Shall we head over to trance number two? Sure. <laughs> 